वेलकम ऑल दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर टू ऑफ रूट लोकस टेक्निक सीरीज इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सब इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स रिलेटेड टू रूट लोकस सो द फर्स्ट एंड वेरी मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म इज एस प्लेन एस प्लेन इज डिफाइंड एज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन ऑन विच द लापलास्ट ट्रांसफॉर्म इज ग्राफ्ट सो लेट एस ड्रॉ एस प्लेन This is the S plane. It is the imaginary axis of S plane, and it is a real axis of S plane. S plane is generally used for uh, graphing Laplace transform. Moving on to the next point, that is, poles on the S plane is always be represented by symbol cross, and the zeros on the S plane. are represented by symbol 0 or o so let's take an example in this example we are given an open loop transfer function that is g of s equals to k s plus 1 s plus 2 s plus 3 so it is a open loop transfer function and if we are going to find out the number of poles and the number of zeros then we should equate the brackets in the numerator and in the denominator on equating the brackets that are present in the numerator we will get zeros from the numerator and on equating the brackets in the denominator we get poles so if we talk about poles here so we have to equate the brackets in the denominator here on equating s plus 2 this bracket equals to 0 then we will get s equals to minus 2 so one of our pole is s equals to minus 2 on equating s plus 3 equals to 0 we get s equals to minus 3 this is our second pole s equals to minus 3 Let's talk about the number of zeros. So, on equating s plus one equals to zero, we will get s equals to minus one as one of our zero. If we want to plot these poles and zero onto the s plane, then how we will do it? So, let's make three points: minus one, minus two. Minus three. Here at minus one, we have one zero, and since zero is represented by this symbol, so this is our zero. At minus two, we have pole, and pole is represented by cross symbol, so we simply put cross at minus two. At minus three, we have again pole. so we simply put cross here so it is very easy and the basic representation of poles and zero onto s plane let's discuss third point branch of root loci lies on the real axis of s plane only in that area where there are odd number of poles or zero in the right hand side so what does it say let's take an example previous example that we discussed minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and this is minus infinite this is plus infinite this is imaginary axis this is real axis so in that previous example we have 0 at Minus one, we have pole at minus two, we have pole at minus three. According to this rule, what does it say that the branch of the root loci lies on the real axis of S plane only in the area where there are odd number of poles or zero in the right hand side? So let us divide this whole real axis into the different different areas. 
so there are four areas first area starts from minus 1 and ends at plus infinite second area starts from minus 2 and end at minus 1 third area starts from minus 3 and end at minus 2 and fourth area starts from minus infinite and end at minus 3 so area 1 that is represented by x1 starts from minus 1 and end at plus infinite minus 1 2 plus infinite here is x1 area number 2 that is represented by x2 will ranges from minus 2 to minus 1 minus 2 to minus 1 area number 3 that lies from minus 3 to minus 2 area 3 x3 three. lies from minus 3 to minus 2 here is x2 here is x3 area number 4 lies from minus infinite to minus 3 that is represented by x4 will lies from minus infinite to minus 3 and it is x4 so these are our four areas and according to this rule root loci lies only in that area in which there are odd number of poles or zeros in its RHS so let's discuss about the x1 area x1 area is this area and we need to count that how many poles or zeros lies in the RHS of this area since there are no poles or zeros lies in the RHS of this area that is minus 1 to infinite so we can say that root loci will not lie in this area x1 so it is an invalid area secondly let's discuss about x2 x2 lies from minus 2 to minus 1 in the RHS of x2 there is only one zero that is minus one so one zero lies in the right hand side of x2 since one is an odd number and we are discussing about only odd number of poles and zero so it is a valid area let's discuss about area 3 that is x3 x3 lies from minus 3 to minus 2 in the RHS of x3 let's count the number of poles or zeros so in the RHS of x3 there is one pole that is minus 2 and one zero that is minus 1 so the number of poles or zeros in the RHS of x3 is 2 since 2 is an even number and we are discussing about only odd number that's why it is invalid area let's discuss about area 4 area 4 lies from minus infinite to minus 3 in RHS of minus 3 how many poles and zeros lies so first pole is minus 3 second pole is minus 2 third zero is minus 1 since number of poles and zeros in the RHS of x4 is 3 and 3 is also an odd number that's why it is a valid area so we can say that root loci lies only from minus 2 to minus 1 in this area and also from minus infinite to minus 3 these are the two valid area moving on to the next rule the branch of the root loci starts from the open loop poles and terminates at open loop zeros so it is very most important rule according to this rule the poles are represented by x and the zeros are represented by zero sign and this rule says that the branch of the root loci this is the branch of root loci 
सो द ब्रांच ऑफ रूट लोकी स्टार्ट ऑलवेज फ्रॉम ओपन लूप पोल्स सो दिस इज द पोल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ब्रांच ऑफ रूट लोकी ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम दिस पोल एंड टर्मिनेट्स एट दिस जीरो डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पॉइंट नंबर फाइव इफ द ब्रांच ऑफ द रूट लोकी लाइज बिटवीन टू कॉन्जुगेट पोल्स देन ब्रेक अवे पॉइंट विल एग्जिस्ट सिमिलरली इफ द ब्रांच ऑफ द रूट लोकी लाइज बिटवीन टू जीरोज देन ब्रेक इन पॉइंट विल एग्जिस्ट सो वॉट डज इट सेज डेट डेट्स अज्यूम एन एग्जाम्पल माइनस वन माइनस टू माइनस थ्री माइनस फोर इट इज एन इमेजनरी एक्सिस ऑफ एसप्लेन इट इज रियल एक्सिस ऑफ एसप्लेन लेट्स एज्यूम डेट एट माइनस वन हियर इज वन जीरो एट माइनस टू हियर इज वन जीरो एट माइनस थ्री हियर इज वन पोल एंड एट माइनस फोर इट इज ऑल्सो ए पोल सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल नंबर फाइव इफ रूट लोकी लाइज बिटवीन टू पोल्स लेट्स कंसिडर दिस पार्ट दिस एरिया एंड इन द आर एच एस ऑफ दिस एरिया दैट इज माइनस थ्री टू माइनस फोर हाउ मैनी नंबर ऑफ पोल्स और जीरोज आर देयर देर आर थ्री पोल्स एंड जीरोज दैट इज वन पोल एंड टू जीरोज सो इट इज अ वैलिड एरिया सिंस द नंबर ऑफ पोल्स एंड जीरोज इन द आर एच एस इज इक्वल्स टू थ्री सो इट इज वैलिड एरिया सो रूट लोकी विल लाई इन दिस एरिया एंड इफ द रूट लोकी लाइज इन बिटवीन टू पोल्स दिस इज द कंडीशन वेयर टू कॉन्जुगेट पोल्स आर लाइंग ऑन द एक्स एक्सिस एंड द रूट लोकी इज ऑल्सो लाइंग इन दिस एरिया देन द ब्रेक अवे पॉइंट विल एग्जिस्ट सो द ब्रेक अवे पॉइंट विल एग्जिस्ट एनी वेयर बिटवीन दिस एरिया दिस इज अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूट नंबर फाइव डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द रूल नंबर सिक्स इफ द ब्रांच ऑफ द रूट लोकी लाइज बिटवीन टू जीरोज देन ब्रेक इन पॉइंट एग्जिस्ट लेट्स काउंट अज्यूम डेट दिस इज द एरिया इन द आर एच एस ऑफ दिस एरिया हाउ मैनी नंबर ऑफ पोल्स और जीरोज ओनली वन जीरो इज देयर डेट इज माइनस वन एंड वन जीरो इज देयर एंड वन इज ए और नंबर सो दिस एरिया इज अ वैलिड एरिया इट इज अ वैलिड एरिया दैट्स वाई रूट लोकी विल लाई ऑल्सो हियर सिंस रूट लोकी लाई बिटवीन टू कॉन्जुकेट जीरो देन अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस रूल ब्रेक इन पॉइंट एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन माइनस वन टू माइनस टू सो दिस इज द होल कॉन्सेप्ट ब्रेक इन पॉइंट इज ऑलवेज बी एप्लीकेबल इन केस ऑफ जीरोज एंड ब्रेक अवे पॉइंट ऑलवेज बी एप्लीकेबल इन केस ऑफ टू कॉन्जुकेट पोल्स लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज सेंट्रॉयड ऑफ एसिम टोर्स सो द सेंट्रॉयड इज डिफाइंड एज अ पॉइंट ऑन द रियल एक्सिस ऑफ एस प्लेन फ्रॉम वेयर ऑल द एसिम टोर्स डिपार्ट दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल वेयर दिस इज अ सेंट्रॉयड एट माइनस वन एंड इट इज एन एस प्लेन सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस रूल इट इज अ पॉइंट ऑन द रियल एक्सिस फ्रॉम वेयर ऑल द एसिम टोर्स डिपार्ट सो दिस इज सेंट्रॉयड at minus 1 and from this centroid this asymptotes goes from minus 1 to infinite this is the asymptote and another asymptotes also goes from minus 1 to minus infinite so this is centroid next rule angle of asymptotes angle formed by the asymptotes with the real axis when it goes to infinite so when the asymptotes departs from the centroid then it makes some angle with the real axis that is here it is making 60 degree of angle with the real axis so this 60 degree is nothing but a angle of asymptotes it is one more important concept that is the asymptotes originate from centroid and reaches always to the infinity at some definite angle so it is a summary that is the asymptotes that is this line will originate from the centroid and reaches to the infinity making an angle that is named as angle of asymptotes 
let's discuss point number 10 that is departure angle so the departure angle is the angle made by root locus with the real axis during its departure so whenever root locus departs from the real axis of the s plane then it makes some angle and that angle is known as angle of departure departure angle is only calculated in case of imaginary poles that is here is the s plane if the pole this is the imaginary axis this is the real axis if the poles of the lies on the imaginary axis here then we can say that these are imaginary poles so the departure angle concept will only be applicable if there are existence of imaginary poles discussing about next point that is arrival angle angle made by root locus with the real axis during its arrival is known as angle of arrival so it is an angle which the root loci makes with the real axis during its arrival and the arrival angle always be calculated in case of imaginary zeros so it is an imaginary axis again of s plane this is real axis and if the imaginary zeros lies onto that axis that is imaginary axis then these two zeros are considered as imaginary zeros and also if the imaginary zeros exist then only the arrival angle will be calculated so this is all about some important terms that are related to root locus technique thank you if you like my youtube video then please press the like button and subscribe to my youtube channel